Hey guys, welcome back to yet another Cave Divers React video this week. There's Woody and Gus. And I don't know why I pointed to myself when I said Woody, because I'm Gus. Woody. And Gus. That's Woody right there. <laughs> um, this week we have a longer video. Last week was kind of short and, and talking about someone who got caught up in a wreck and uh, panicked immediately, which is what you know most people do when, a, when they are in an overhead environment and they are uh, not prepared basically to deal with emergencies like that. This week, we are going back to a show that we analyzed about a month ago where we talked about the, the cave rescue that Woody Jasper did um, down in Florida. And, you know, that was the show called Rescue 911. So we're back with William Shutner uh, for Captain you, Woody. Kirk. Captain Kirk. That's right. Um, and, you know, once again, the quality is not the best, but... Um, you know, we really, really want to talk about this specific, this specific incident because you know it's uh, there's a lot to learn. So let's give it a shot. I've not seen it. Here we go. Excited about making his first real dive that afternoon. Greg has been talking to my parents about diving and all the situations we've done, all the experiences we've had. And he was really excited about going diving. He do the big Velcro one first. We had gone out the weekend before and done a lot of practice. We went through everything I could think of that I had gone through with my certification. Looks like Greg awesome. had such a great yeah. dive, his first dive. We weren't that concerned about his certification. When we got to the bottom, we could not even see Bob and Jason due to the poor visibility. Greg and I decided that we would go about our dive thinking that we would eventually meet up with them. I love to dive in Puget Sound because it's dark, it's soft, the life is very, very quiet and still. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. There's a mystery to it. I realized that we were close to 75 feet. I didn't want to be that deep with Greg. So I signaled that we were going to go up. He had his buoyancy device in his hand and he was having trouble with his inflator. I looked at Greg's gauge and realized we're in trouble. He has no air left. Wow. Yep. And then he grabbed my regulator out of my mouth. All right. Man. Let's stop here for a second I, because... I, 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 I don't want to interrupt, but did he start with a possibly an empty tank or a very low tank? That because how come there's such a how did they run out of air? How did he run out of air that quickly? Well, do we know that? At we all? don't know. Okay. No, I think I mean I think he he had a regular tank, but we, we don't know how long into the dive this is. Like this could be thirty minutes in. Remember, this guy is like it's like his first dive. Like okay. his first dive, maybe after being certified, which would be his fifth dive ever. Mm. So he's very, very new, and they're diving in, you know, around Seattle. And she's talking about how it's murky, it's hard to see, whatever. So he's just diving, enjoying the dive. Next thing you know, he's out of air. And I think they're in dry suits, which is a additional level of complexity. Maybe they're right. trained in that. They haven't. Uh, they haven't mentioned anything about the dry suit. I wonder if they're wearing it just for the reenactment. Uh, because these are actors, obviously doing the reenactment, but um, yeah, they do have uh, they do have a dry suit. But one thing that I wanted to point out is, and, and we get this question. I've I got I've gotten this question several times during class. Is when you're doing body breathing, like somebody ran out of air, or they have a problem, and their regulator doesn't work, whatever. Um, the question is always like, why wouldn't you pass your octopus rather than your primary? Right? Why passing the primary the way SSI does it, which is they pass the primary? Uh, why do that? Why not the octopus? And one of the answers is 
look, when people freak out, they don't wait for you to hand them an octopus or whatever. They're going to grab whatever is available to their disposal. And in this case, you can see on the video that the guy just straight up ripped the regulator out of her mouth. That's a really, that's definitely a good point. The other reason, and it's SSI's main reason for passing the primary. So we grab the line, not the regulator, because we don't want to purge it. And passing it is because if you think about it, that works in every gear configuration. It doesn't matter what gear configuration your buddy has. If you pass the primary, which as you said, Gus, they're probably going to go for anyway. You can at the same time reach up and grab their BCD and pass that primary. And that, sorry, I'm going blurry. And that gives <laughs> you a moment to then calm them down and you can pull out your Octo. So it doesn't matter if you have an Air Source 2 or 3 or if you do have an Octo, this works in every single gear configuration and prevents it from being ripped out of your mouth. Right. What I was going to observe is I actually thought that this brand new diver did a very good job and stayed very calm by actually bringing her back down. I didn't feel like he was panicking and hurting her. He's like, I'm out of air or I can't. I don't know why he was trying to inflate anyway, because he should be deflating on the way up. But he brought right. her back down, and at that point, he was pretty calm. And then only then, though, did he realize, oh, I'm out of air, and he grabbed her octo, her, me, her primary. Yeah, primary and I assume mouth. we're going to be quiet here in a second. I don't know what happens next, but I certainly hope she puts her octo in her mouth and she doesn't panic. That's what I'm wondering what's going to happen next yep and another another one that reminded me from the class was when people say well why are we doing regulator recovery like why would i let go of my regulator well sometimes you don't let go of your regulator they let it go for you they rip it out of your mouth by kicking you in the face or whatever right it happens the people rip your regulator out of your mouth so that's why you learn how to deal with that and, and what's you, the what's the other risk of somebody ripping a regulator out of your mouth think about the mouthpiece you bit down on that mouthpiece right yeah that's how you hold the mouthpiece they rip it out of your mouth they get a regulator with no mouthpiece if that <laughs> mouthpiece is not on there securely now we got a major problem don't we because huge a huge problem because this regulator is no longer available for either one. And then they will have to go to true buddy breathing. You mentioned that a second ago, where they're going to have to share one regulator back and forth. Yeah, That's tricky. In fact, we don't really teach that skill in SSI where they're going back and forth sharing one regulator. No. But that's, that's the, the risk of them ripping that out of their mouth. Huh? I wonder, I wonder Woody, if, you, if, you, if we could like breathe out of a regulator without a mouthpiece like a free-flowing regulator like holding it on the side good point i think so and just purging it right just pressing the purge button getting a breath here and there i mean it would be sketchy but i think it's possible well why don't we figure it out and try it <laughs> i've never done that i think we're gonna have to try that and film it yeah as a follow-up and it will be like and by the way i'm gonna volunteer you i'm gonna rip the mouthpiece out of your <laughs> mouth and then you're gonna free flow that into your face and i'll be there filming that Let's I love that. That's awesome. Here we go. It took me a moment to get my emergency, get it cleared and get it in my mouth. But we had what? plenty of air like to get no us to the deal. surface. I didn't feel we were in any type of a critical situation at all. Nice. We were just going to buddy breathe up to the surface. We started kicking and we were kicking so hard that I was getting cramps in my legs. But we could get nowhere. Wow. Greg was too heavy. I know you have I was going to ditch his weight belt. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Greg let go of me to grab that regulator. I was like a cork shooting out of control to the surface. I 
had a sensation of Greg on the bottom without air. And I knew that he was drowning. I knew that. That has to be the worst I, feeling. I'm feeling really bad right now. I mean, can you imagine her feeling and his feeling? So ooh, there's a lot to react to here. She tried to ditch those weights. Great, smart thinking. A weight belt versus having integrated weights, right? Back then they didn't have integrated weights. Really hard to remove those weight belts, especially if anything is over it. Why did she corkscrew, I'm wondering? I didn't understand that. They were yeah. they were bicycle kicking, and that I get it. They're new divers, and they maybe they haven't perfected their kicks yet. So let's not be overcritical of that. That right. I'm sure we both were seeing that, and we could criticize that. But they still had enough kick, I feel like, to get to the surface. But I wonder why she corkscrewed it. I don't understand that. I don't. Maybe um, – she was adding air to her BC and kicking to see if they could get going. You know, like when you rescue somebody who's unresponsive and heavy and you add a little bit of air to get going if they're too heavy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, she just corkscrewed to the surface. Well, if she did add air to help them both, that's why, for those of you who are certified, that's why we practice the maneuver of really make sure you've got your buddy. You really gripped their BCD, whether you do a left arm to left arm at the beginning and holding their strap. Because if you're helping them and you, you don't want to let go if you added air. And that's yeah. why that buddy hold, whichever one you're taught, is so critical. This is the example of why. Yeah. Now, we'll be quiet because if you're, I'm sure, in as much suspense right now as I am, like, I want to know what happens. Does she go back down? Well, let's hope. find out. Help. When we continue. I thought, how will I tell his mother? What will I say to his mother? I couldn't tell his parents that he drowned. When Rita Cannell's novice diving partner, Greg, got into trouble and panicked, she ended up shooting toward the surface, out of control while he remained more than 75 feet under, without air, somewhere on the floor of Puget Sound. Dang. Ah! Ah! Rita happened to surface right near Trucks Turkle and two other rescue certified dive masters. She came up so fast that she shot out of the water. Oh, she was screaming for help. Oh my God, oh my God, he's gonna die. Over here, over here, please. Right down here. Calm down, calm my down. Buddy, what happened, what happened? My buddy is down there. I just lost okay, my buddy. Where is he? She says he's right below us. He's directly below us. It's 70, 75 feet. He's still down there. you got to go get him. How much air do you guys have? I didn't have enough air to go back down. But Bill and Ken both told me they had enough air. Go. Go. She was almost hysterical. She almost fought me to go back down. I thought, how will I tell his mother? What will I say to his mother? Calm down. I couldn't tell his parents that he drowned. They had to save him. Although trained in rescue diving, Bill Kaloran and Ken Kali'i A'a had never tried to save someone before. I noticed there was some bubbles coming up, so I went straight down and followed his bubbles. And we descended for about 15, 20 feet and the trail of bubbles just disappeared. And right there I knew that there was no more breathing involved whatsoever by this person down there. Yikes. I started to get scared. The visibility was really bad and after I lost track of his bubbles I was thinking to myself, oh man, how am I gonna find this guy? I was just lucky I found him right where I landed, on the bottom. His mask was off his face, his eyes was wide open, his skin was real pale, like a picture out of a horror movie. I pushed off the bottom, we didn't move, and tried to kick and we still couldn't move. He just had too much weight on. Wow. 
insane amount of weight. Had to have this. Ken was struggling to try to bring him up, so I immediately dumped his weight belt. On our way up, I was constantly looking at his face to look for any kind of movement or any kind of sign of consciousness, and there was none whatsoever. <laughs> See the bubbles over there? Yeah. See? They're on their way up. They got him! Okay. I knew he wasn't breathing, but I checked to make sure anyway. He's not breathing. He's not breathing. And we started our mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth count, breathing for him every five seconds. 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. I mean, this is textbook wow. rescue class. Really good job. I'm being quiet because I'm like watching this. They did a great job. I'm worried about her, by the way. I'm going to back up a second because she flew up from 75 feet. So I don't know if she's bent or thank goodness she didn't get an embolism. Yeah. But these guys, it's it, he, it, a couple things. It appeared that he was breathing for a little while and he was only not breathing for maybe a minute or so so maybe they can bring him back because he there were bubbles when they first started going down so maybe he did have some air the overweighting is from a a new diver that's in a dry suit you could see that happening couldn't you because a yeah. dry suit takes a lot of extra air or the dry suit the other thing i was thinking is maybe it's flooded Maybe that was the right amount of weight, and now the dry suit's flooded. That's another possibility. So there's a lot here. But this part here, that is exactly what you do. Is he breathing? No. Squeeze the mouth. They open the airway, and they start giving two breaths every five seconds. It's awesome. And as you're counting, you're starting to remove your equipment. Yes. So they're already out of their gear. That's awesome. I was able to get on the boat very quickly. I got inside and I tried to start it. It wouldn't start. Damn. I watched what was going on with Greg. Oh, no. You just can't help but almost chant to yourself. Like, come on, Greg, you can do it. You can do it, Greg. You can breathe. Come on, buddy, you can breathe. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. I don't know if you noticed that detail, but they're twisting his his head to do the the breath. I never even thought about doing that. I was always like kicking super hard and trying to maintain that look to the sky kind of thing for the victim. They just twisted the head, and I'm like, how did I not think of that? It's way easier. It, yes, but you got to be careful. The reason yeah. we don't always twist the head is because if you're in the ocean, it's going to throw water, and good point. It, it could choke out both of you. So in this particular case, I, it doesn't look like there's any waves. It looks like almost like a lake. I guess it's the sound. Yeah. But you got to be really careful because otherwise, water is going to come in, and uh, you're going to cause a problem for yourself as well that's why we don't teach twisting the head right a guy in a zodiac was cruising by i said quick we have a drowned diver you get him in the boat get him to shore and call 911 as i was into giving him mouth to mouth several cycles i noticed he inhaled on his own breathing and that was the best thing I'd ever seen that whole day. Come on, pal. Come on, man. Come on, man. Bill and I just started to yell, breathe, breathe. Come on. Don't stop breathing. Just breathe, hoping that he could hear us. Hey, hey, so the rescue breaths work. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. In this case, it seems like they did. All of a sudden, here's this Zodiac. It's like godsend. It was excellent. Could you stop it for one second here? The reason I said that, everyone is there's been a lot of discussion whether or not rescue breaths are even worthwhile when you are transporting somebody in the water. Or should you just focus on getting them to the land or boat as quickly as possible? The latest thinking is try the rescue breaths for three to five minutes, even up to maybe seven minutes. And then if there's no response, start booking it and abandon the rescue breaths. It's a debate whether or not it's worthwhile to give the breaths. 
But this is really interesting, and it's the first time, Gus, I've ever seen it where they worked. I mean, we think that's what caused him to start breathing again was those rescue breaths. That's, that's what right. I would take from this. That's really going to be reinforcing for the rescue class that I have coming up, which I have one coming up soon. I'm going to be like, look, we've seen videos where it has worked. That's right. So it's worth trying. There's no downside other than you are possibly losing some time on transporting them to land or a boat. She was barely breathing. It was real shallow, gargly. A lot of water was being exhaled and inhaled. There were some people on the beach and I just started to scream at them, tell them to dial 911. We've got a drowned victim here. Kept yelling that over and over again. District 13, diving accident at KVI Beach. Time now 1305, KO 933. Come on, man. Keep breathing, bud. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You got it? When trucks finally managed to get the boat started, he picked up Rita's son and her husband Bob and headed for shore. Rita was real frantic. Uh, it was really hard to get anything that was too much coherent out of her. And she was saying something about, I killed Greg. Greg is hurt. He's, we ran out of air. I can't believe that. What happened? I don't know what happened. I vaguely remember them getting on the boat, but I didn't care that it was Bob. I didn't care that it was Jason. I needed to be on the shore with Greg. Right here, come on, I'm ready. The gentleman in the Zodiac pulled up and said, the paramedics need the dive partner now. And I just kind of threw myself into the boat and we headed into shore. So Woody, why would the paramedics ask for the dive partner? This is a good question and I'm gonna answer my opinion on that but first i want to back up to i didn't want to interrupt i wanted everybody to have a chance to see that one of the things you have to be careful is if if you're ever involved in a rescue you can have some psychological effects of guilt i killed him she didn't kill him she tried to save him he was panicking you do the best you can but you can't beat yourself up where she killed him I don't think she killed him. I mean, she was trying very hard to save him, and she ended up floating to the surface. So be careful because that's very common. Now, the paramedics are probably going to ask her questions. If you get asked questions, now it's time to be very factual because everything you say and the closer you are to the incidents, the more weight and reliability that those answers are going to have ultimately in court. But I don't think that's the paramedic's purpose of asking her questions, although it's going to be used. Believe me, they're going to write that down later. So the, I think they want to know how long do you think he was not breathing? When you let go of him, how long was it before you came up and the other divers went back down? That would be relevant to them because they're yep. probably trying to f write down some of that stuff ultimately while they're trying to recover them. And they will then communicate that further to a hospital. And I think they're going to start full CPR. Breaths, chest compressions, AED is now what's needed. That's why it's so imperative to hurry up and get them to shore where you have those tools to revive them. That's right. I'm a nurse at the health center here on the island and I deal with this aid crew on a very regular basis. And once I identified them, I knew that he was in good hands. And so I ran to Greg, Greg and I knelt down next to him. I kept saying, Greg, Greg, don't fight. Don't fight, buddy. You're, you're okay. You're not underwater anymore. And he seemed to quiet down. King County paramedic Kathleen Bonner took charge at the scene. This young man had a classic near drowning. He was in acute respiratory distress. He was unable to breathe on his own efficiently. He was coughing and choking and spitting a lot. So Rita, how far down were you? He had a fluid in his lungs from the bases up to the clavicles, which is not a good sign. I don't know. I just couldn't handle it, and I turned around and um, 
And I just kept saying, we shouldn't have taken him down. We shouldn't have taken him down. He did not know his age. He didn't even know that he had been diving. It was very clear that he was unable to get oxygen to his brain. Greg was taken to Virginia Mason Medical Center, where he was treated by critical care physician Stephen Kirkland. Okay, has he shown any kind of response? His lungs were severely injured. The amount of oxygen getting into his blood was very small. In addition, there was the concern of an air embolism or an air bubble being trapped uh, in his brain. I'll hold the door for you. Okay. Greg was treated in the hyperbaric chamber for eight hours. Now, um, that bubble that went to his brain, by the way, is a risk. When you are rescuing somebody, they've been underwater for a while. At, in, that case, in this case, it was almost three and a half atmospheres. So when they come up, air is going to expand inside their body by three and a half fold, including the air, the nitrogen that went into his bloodstream those bubbles are coming up really really fast you're no longer bringing that person up at 30 feet per minute that's why when you bring them up you want to open their airway to hope that that will bubble out so they don't have an embolism that's why we do that but it those other bubbles can cause neurological damage which that's a risk so you just can't beat yourself up over that and the treatment would be a hyperbaric chamber and O2, which is apparently what they're doing. I just wasn't sure if you guys that aren't divers understood that's why that brain, the bubble in the brain would occur when you're bringing a diver up from depth. That's not uncommon, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I'm pretty surprised that the uh, hyperbaric chamber they're using is big enough that they have a full on, you know, bed in there with doctors and equipment. I mean, it's. It's huge, it seems to be. That's cool. How are you doing? Hi, Greg. When I got to see Greg, I said, Greg, I am so, so sorry. I didn't mean to leave you. I didn't desert you. Yeah. And, and he gave me the thumbs up and a little nod on the head. And wow. he just kind of reassured me that it was okay. Oh, man. I can't blame Rita for uh, what happened to us. I, I feel that she did her best to get us both to the top as just a freak accident. Twenty-year-old Greg Goldstein was released from the hospital without any permanent injury. Recently, he got a chance to meet the men who saved his life that day. I think the whole scene all the way around was extremely lucky. Do you guys remember this stuff? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, I kind of gave up hope on this. Thank you. It took us three days to find the gear that was left down there. So being able to find Greg as quickly as they could find him was a miracle. I think there's a class starting on Tuesday. You up for it? Mm, sure. <laughs> I'd like people to know diving isn't that dangerous. The only reason that they had a problem is because he wasn't trained. Otherwise, none of this would have even taken place. You don't... I'm not kidding you. The comment that he just made is exactly what I was going to say. I keep coming back to training. And I love that he's like, yeah. I'll, I'll take a class now. He probably realizes the extreme need for being trained before you dive. I also love that he gave her the comfort that she needed as the victim. He's like, look, you tried your best. This was not your fault. You were absolutely didn't abandon me, and I understand that. And I actually appreciate that you tried to save me. This was a freak accident. The freak accident was many things. He ran out of air. He's overweighted. But I really love that she was relieved, perhaps, of her guilt by the victim. Rather than, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to go after you. You didn't know what you're doing. You took me down there and I was a new diver. You know, that can happen as well. It could lot. have been yeah. the other way around. And I'm just so happy to have seen this play out this way. And that's probably what would have happened if this guy died, to be honest. Everyone would have been sued. Um, even the poor guy that was just driving around in his Zodiac. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just glad that this was a positive outcome, for sure. Definitely. Just give somebody the keys to a um, plane to fly without a pilot's license. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. Same thing goes for scuba. Yep. You don't just give somebody a, 
a cylinder and a, a vest and some fins and a mask and here you go, have fun. Just don't work that way. I will not take anybody down that's not certified. And no matter how enthusiastic the people are to, you need to really take a look at uh, uh, what is at stake. <laughs> I plan on getting certified as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. So the guy the wasn't even certified. Being there, he was like his first time. And think he was I'd down at 75 feet. I can't say thank you enough yeah. for what they had done. You know, we do take divers down that aren't certified. I, I, I want to comment on this. There is something, everybody calls it a little something different. Try scuba, discover scuba, uh, resort experience. <laughs> but there's training even for that. You're taught some very basic skills before going on one of those discover scubas or try scuba, whatever you call it. Yeah. And one of those skills that you're taught is actually running out of air and how to buddy and how to share air and have a buddy hold. Yeah. Because, you know, we got to make sure that anybody we take underwater can handle that particular situation. That's right. This was a really cool one. I felt, I felt the need to remain quieter than usual. <laughs> the story itself was stating a lot of the comments that we would have stated. And when we, I loved Gus that when we were commenting, they would then say almost the same comments. Did you notice that? <laughs> Basically. That's, that's unusual. We haven't had a video like that where we say something and then like five seconds later, they were kind of saying almost exactly the same thing. I think it's also interesting that like the Woody Jasper video that, that we talked about last month, I mean, just come out right next to three dive masters. <laughs> that are rescue divers that knew how to do that because I feel like if you come out right next to a, a diver that has some experience, they could potentially be able to go down and bring this guy back up. Like, okay, let me dump weights and let me drag his, his body up to the surface. But then the rest of the rescue, um, you know, needs to happen. And had these divers just stayed at the surface and just be like, hey, boat, please come get us or whatever, I don't think this guy would have made it. Agree. And so. how about that they found him? Yeah. It seemed like, you know, that visibility down there was stirred up a great deal by them and in general not great because they said yeah. it was a lack of visibility right away. Man, they got lucky, but the bubbles helped yeah. too. But still, there was a lot of, like you just pointed out, a lot of good things had to happen for this to turn out the way it did for sure so great one good i pick. hope uh yeah i hope everyone watching enjoyed that as much as we did uh watching it uh please go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that already i i hear people you know are binging our videos watching all of these back to back to back and not hitting that subscribe button come please, on just please it helps us a lot make it, really it happen does. for sure um increasing visibility with others and all of that um you know next week we come up with uh yet another uh video uh in this case there's a couple of options i, I need to think about which one uh would we we can react to there's okay. many 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 videos on the queue uh thank you so much for your suggestions a lot of them came directly from you guys thank you uh so yeah the if you have any other suggestions please go ahead and check that there are a couple that have been requested over and over and over and over again uh that we want to for sure take a time and and react to those but uh if you haven't seen one within the channel please go ahead and uh, send it to us info at divetalkmedia.com is our email address uh or leave a comment below with the link to the video it, you know we can add it to the queue and react to it yeah and also if you subscribe we do some really nice giveaways <laughs> and we have more in store i'll just For tell sure. you that we have some really cool stuff you've seen already some of the stuff we've given away and we have a lot more in store i think that you're really going to like but it's only eligible for those that subscribe in a public way in other words you subscribe and you make it public so others can see that you subscribed to us so that's right that's a reward yep uh the other thing is i've been getting i don't know 
over the last few days, a lot of requests for us to deliver classes. People want to take training with us, which I thought it was uh, it was pretty interesting. And obviously, I'm directing people to the the company that we both happen to work and teach for if they're interested in, in taking training with us. We're not full-time trainers. Me and Woody are not full-time scuba instructors. We have our own regular jobs. We just teach once in a while. But um, I think it's cool that people want to learn with us. Uh, and appreciate you know some of the experience that we bring to the table and and all of that. Um, so maybe yeah. we could do a joint class. That's something that <laughs> That's our right. subscribers maybe would enjoy. That they we they haven't talk. done a joint class in a long time. I know, it'd be right? really cool. Back for... when I was a dive master, I feel like yes. So um, other than that, thank you so much, guys, for watching. We'll see you next week with yet another video. And once again, hit that subscribe button uh, to be notified when uh, the next video drops. Thank so, you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, guys.